The Apollo Theater opens in Harlem, New York City. Everglades National Park is established, and the passenger liner Morrow Castle catches fire off the coast of New Jersey, taking 134 people to their watery grave. The year is 1934, and this is the era of Nash that was called the Kenosha Duesenberg. Let me introduce you to the Nash Advanced 8. But before getting into all of it, I'm your host, Jay. Welcome to What It's Like, the automotive channel that digs different cars. The goal is to cover all of the American cars from 1930 through 1964 and cars outside of those parameters. Just to let you know, this is not an AI channel. My voice just naturally sucks. We talk history, specs, design, post between four and five episodes each week with engine episodes generally on Wednesdays. If any of that sounds of interest to you, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. Real quick announcement before getting into the meat and potatoes on this one. We are bringing back a segment called Part of the Conversation. The next part of the conversation, which is a live podcast, will be November 20th, Wednesday, November 20th, and it will cover the AACA or the Antique Car Club of America. So mark your calendar for Wednesday, November 20th, around 11 o'clock. Hope to see you in the comment section. All right, 1934, Nash model lineup was broken down into four models, the Lafayette, Big Six, which rode a wheelbase of 116 inches. Advanced Eight, which rode a wheelbase of 121 inches. And then you had Ambassador at the top, which was offered in two wheelbase configurations, 133 and 142. The Advanced Eight could be had in five-passenger four-door sedan, two-passenger coupe, four-passenger rumble seat coupe, and five-passenger four-door brome. Nash would offer the Advanced 8 from 1932, 33, 34, and 35. This era of Nash is often referred to as the Kenosha Duesenberg because of the caliber of car Nash produced during this era. This era of Nash saw the most exquisite, most luxurious Nash ever made. Standard equipment included, but not limited to, shatterproof glass in the windshield, glove box, Disappearing ashtray, twin wipers, non glare rear view mirror, stop stop lights, tail lights are built into the fenders. All advanced eight models benefited from the following appointments dome light, rear window curtain, locking handle on trunk, four passenger rumble seat coupe, have leather upholstery rumble seat, adjustable rear window. Options not getting into all of the options, but here are a few. Non-shattered glass on all windows except for the windshield because the windshield was on the house. It came as standard. Freewheeling. Speed stream shields, a.k.a. fender skirts for the rear wheels. White wall tires. Detachable trunk with trunk rack. Radio. Hot water heater. Nash also offered three equipment groups. Royal Equipment Group. All models except those with built-in standard trunks got two spare wheels mounted to the front fender wells with two spare tires, two wheel locks, two drum style metal tire covers, and folding rear trunk rack. Regal Equipment Group was on all models with the standard built-in trunk, same as Royal Equipment, except for there was no folding trunk rack included. Crown Equipment could be had on all models. The one spare detachable wheel is mounted in the right-hand side front fender, Plus, gets a folding trunk rack on models not equipped with a built-in trunk. Let's talk specs. It rides a wheelbase of 121 inches. It weighs an estimated 3,770 pounds. Price, $1,065, which would be equivalent to you spending $25,059.37 in the year 2024. Total, 1934 Nash. This is an estimate, 5,000 units. Moving on to engine, only one engine available for the Nash Advanced 8, 260.8 cubic inch displacement in line, overhead twin ignition 8, 4.274 liters. It's good for 100 horsepower at 2800 RPM with an estimated 195 pound feet or 264 newton meters at 1800 RPM with a bore of 3.125 inches and a stroke of 4.25 inches. This engine featured twin ignition, meaning two spark plugs per cylinder. 
nine main bearing crankshaft Hotchkiss drive. Let's talk styling starting with these fenders which have different levels. At the edges, they aren't the same level as the rest of the fender. That level wraps around to the front, but notice it narrows. Bullet styled running lights attached to the fenders. Also notice that the running lights sit in a tiny channel. Dull horns, which are bright. Headlight pods, which are also bright. They are mounted to a bar that is mounted to the fender as well as the radiator shroud. Horn is mounted underneath the headlight bar. Just take a gander at that grill. Petite Nash badge, but despite it being small, it has a lot going on inside that badge. Bumpers are simple but elegant. It has two black inlays inside the bumper. So many cool lines at this angle. Just take a minute to take it all in. Small mascot on the hood. The hood has bead lines, butterfly style hood, hinge is covered by trim that goes back to the single piece windshield. Fenders are rolled, artillery wheels with intricate pinstripes, center caps bright with body colored pinstriping, absolutely gorgeous side fender profile. Also notice all of the sculpted lines inside the fender. Better look at the running lights. This hood does not have any louvers. This car does have a cowl vent, wipers mounted at the bottom of the windshield, side mirror is mounted to the door. This car does not have drip rails, but the body is flanged. Art Deco door handles, large running boards with bead bars, absolutely gorgeous fender skirts on this car, as well as rear fender profile. Brake lights and or tail lights look very similar to the running lights, which also sits in a channel. License plate is attached to the brake light housing. Gas filler on the driver's side. Bumpers in the back mimic the front bumpers, but they're a totally different bumper. It has way more of an aggressive curve. Spare tire mounted at the rear inside this metal case. So check out this door panel. Door handle to get out, window crank for the big window. Also notice that the window is notched at the top. Coming down inside, the pedal box down here, you have the emergency brake in or hand brake, parking brake, clutch, brake, gas pedal. Just take a look at this interior. So this is what over the hood would look like. Here's what first person over the hood would look like. Up above, you do have a sun visor, as well as rear view mirror here for a passenger. Dome white in center. On to the button switches and knobs, starting on the left hand, moving right, lighter, radio, 100 mile per hour speedometer with odometer, amp meter, gasoline gauge, coolant temperature, oil pressure, clock in the center, key for the ignition. Taking a real quick gander under the hood, starter, two coils the distributor has 18 wires coming out of it the two wires in the center for the two coils and then 16 spark plugs very clean looking in line eight wing nuts hold the valve cover on oil lines going to the oil filter there is a tunnel in the middle of the engine block where the wires go through and they go on the other side essentially this engine has spark plugs on both sides of the engine Essentially igniting the fuel mixture on both sides of the engine. On the positive side, this is a very underrated car for what these are. This era saw some of the largest Nash cars ever made. Affordable, based on body styles, of course. Great conversation piece because you just don't see these. Against it, mechanically complex. Not too many people under the age of 30 know that this car even exists. Alright, now it's time for Would You Rather, and you thought yesterday's was hard this is even harder this is not fair by any stretch of the imagination but which one would you rather have 1934 chrysler airflow or 1934 nash advanced 8 or 1934 graham great 8 supercharged i'm gonna leave this here for a minute if you need more time feel free pause the video on to the second scenario 1934 hudson 8 or 
1934 Nash Advanced 8 or 1934 Rio Royale 8. Once again, I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. All right, now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give both the name of the band, song title, and the lyric that comes next will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Maybe it's clothes she wears or the way she combs her hair. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below. If you want to send me something more personable, send me an email at what underscore it's underscore like at yahoo.com. If you want to be part of the conversation, please send me an email. I would love to sit down with anybody that's in the car hobby, car sector. I don't care if you're a dealer. I don't care if you're uh, a car designer, automotive designer, automotive personality, YouTuber. If you're in the car sector and you'd love to have a conversation with me, I would love to have a conversation with you. Till next time. Toodaloo! Welcome to the after show. See this car like you've never saw it before without commentary or music, but you can put whatever music you wish in the background. Enjoy.